welcome in this lecture i am going to talk about types of scientific literature to begin with let's quickly review what is essence of technical communication any technical work actually attempts to solve a problem so essence of any technical communication any technical work can be stated in terms of two things one is the question posed or the question asked or the scientific for conducting the scientific inquiry and the answer that has been arrived at by conducting the scientific inquiry so this question could be stated in terms of aim could be stated in terms of objectives of the investigation this maybe it has been framed as an interrogative question in terms of who what where why or how and the answer can be a direct explanation for the question that has been posed or one may even end up with rephrasing the question restating the question if the answer that you found is not compatible with theories existing models now at the heart of the scientific method is technical communication and the body of scientific literature when we start any scientific investigation we have a question and we start conducting experiments we start making observations if you have an observation which nobody else has observed well we communicate that to the body of scientific literature alternatively we start digging at the literature and observing whether somebody else has tried to examine the same question we come up with an hypothesis we come up with a model to explain the phenomena that we are observing we come up with the predictions based on these models we construct test to validate our predictions if we are satisfied we communicate our observations we communicate our model we communicate our hypothesis to the body of the scientific literature somebody else examines our hypothesis our model questions it probably comes up with an alternate hypothesis comes up with a better explanation and again they construct test to validate their predictions they are satisfied they communicate it to the scientific body of literature and so on so this is an iterative process in which progressively we develop better and better understanding of certain phenomena that we are trying to look at so let's try to examine what are types of scientific literature at the forefront of the scientific literature or at the top of the scientific literature are the journal articles so the journal articles can be further classified into letters so these are short or immediate short communications which are of immediate importance of major significance and meant for a wider audience i'll just give you an example so see this communication by c v raman which appeared in nature in 1928 this is just a one page letter which talks about importance about the significance of his work and it's meant for a wider audience or let's examine this paper by or letter by watson and crick which talks about molecular structure of nucleic acid this is again a short letter just one page and communicates the essence of their discovery for wider audience so letters which are meant for wider audience and which communicate a result of a major significance are at the forefront so are 
the original articles. The original articles are papers that or articles that communicate a model or a set of hypotheses with detailed explanations, observations and conclusions reached through this scientific investigation. So, these two are at the forefront of scientific research. The next important set of journal articles are review articles. So, review articles are ones which are collection of a body of literature over say last 5 or 10 years typically with comments with some kind of criticism by peers, by experts in the field. So, experts in a particular area are invited to write review articles which give insight into development of a particular area over the last 10 or 15 years. At the next level are what are called as scientific monographs. So, what are scientific monographs? So, these are collection of work or body of work over say 10, 15 years, maybe one or two decades. This is typically a specialized work and this monographs are written by one, two or a group of researchers who are again acknowledged to be experts in that area. These are mainly meant for researchers, mainly meant for uh, students who are pursuing their PhD, these are meant for uh, the scientific staff or the researchers in the industry. At the next level are handbooks or encyclopedias. So, if you have just completed your undergraduate studies, maybe you have seen some handbooks or encyclopedias towards the end of your graduation. So, these are expert summary meant for wider audience, for the wider technical community and next of course, other textbooks. As undergraduate or postgraduate students, we are very well acquainted with textbooks which are meant for beginners. So, if you look at the journey of a hypothesis or even evolution of a theory, it starts from journal articles, some things, some models, some hypotheses that are mature enough are accepted by the wider scientific community, by the experts, start getting into monographs and they, then they percolate to handbooks and encyclopedias and finally to the textbooks. So, you know we can compare this to a flowing river, at the top of the river there is lot of turbulence. So, you can compare this with the scientific or journal articles, where lot of discussion is going on, the hypothesis or the models being advanced are being criticized, are being changed, are being modified and at the bottom of this river are the textbooks, where you know things are relatively calm. The water is flowing very, very slowly, the knowledge is changing or the body of knowledge is changing very slowly and accepted theories, accepted models appear in textbooks meant for beginners, meant for students who are just getting into a field or just beginning to be experts in the field undergraduate students or the graduate students. So, if you look at a journal paper, it has this funnel like structure that is shown here. The first thing to look at when you look at a journal paper is a title. So, title is a short sentence which highlights the key contributions in this particular paper. Next thing that you should look at in a journal paper is the author and his affiliation or the authors and their affiliation. 
this typically tells you you know how much you can trust these the this particular communication that you are reading uh, well it is well known that peers or experts in an area are typically working in very well known universities and knowing about the affiliation of an author also tells you about authenticity of the work the next important thing that you should look at in a scientific article is the abstract the abstract in a compact way tries to tell you what is the question that has been asked and what is the answer that has been found also it often in very short tells you what is the methodology that has been adopted to find the answer the next important thing in any scientific article is the introduction and a literature survey in some cases these are two separate sections in some cases it could be one section that combines these two aspects introduction actually connects the paper with the wider scientific literature that's why here a wide mouth of the funnel is drawn this is where you have connection with the wider body of the literature so in the introduction the motivation for a particular scientific work is stated and connection with the existing body of the literature is made next comes the method the core of the scientific paper or the scientific communication so this could be an experimental work it could be a theoretical explanation followed by the results and discussion where you know the proposed theory has been tested through experiments through simulations and then comes the conclusion so this again connects the paper with the scientific literature what are the broader implications of this particular scientific investigation so those are explained in the conclusion and of course important part of any technical or scientific communication is references this is where you see on what body of work this particular paper this particular communication has been built so this funnel like structure actually makes connection with the body of the scientific literature in the beginning in the introduction in the literature review and towards the end where the conclusions try to explain broader implications of the scientific inquiry and again through the references thank you